Okay, so you don't need to know too much geometry or algebra to be able to solve this problem right here. A matter of fact, you don't even need a calculator, but obviously you do need some algebra and geometry uh, knowledge and skills. Let's take a look at this problem. Now, the first thing we want to observe is that we have a uh, square or something that appears to be a square next to a triangle. Now, just by looking at the figure right here, we can't absolutely determine or um, be certain that this is a square, but I am going to tell you that this is a square. All right, so we have a square, and then we have a right triangle next to the square, and this angle of the right triangle is 30 degrees. Now, we're told that D, which is the length of the diagonal of the square, is equal to 8. And what we're looking for here is X, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. All right, so I kind of gave you a lot of hints here, but uh, this is a multiple choice question. Let's take a look at our answer. So A is 12, B is 13.2, C is the square root of 77, and D is 8 times the square root of 2. All right, so once again, try not to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, Go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is the figure. And uh, the key to the, um, actually solving this problem is we have a couple of special situations that have to, uh, have to deal with a square and this type of right triangle. So I'm giving you a lot of hints here to uh, get this thing right. But let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer here is D. X is equal to eight times the square root of two. All right, now, if you got that right, you definitely get a happy face and a plus 100% and a certificate of excellence because you appear to know something about the formulas that um, relate the diagonal and the sides of a square and a 30, 60, 90, a right triangle. Both of these are kind of special situations. As a matter of fact, what we have right here is a 45, 45, 90 degree special right triangle. And right here we have a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And uh, if you understand the properties and formulas with these two uh, right triangles or these two special right triangles, well, then you should be able to figure this thing out. But let's get into the solution right now. And this is really important. So if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost. I don't even know what to do here. Well, no problem. By the time uh, this video finishes, you'll understand this completely. But let's suppose you encounter this on a test. What should you do? Well, if you're saying, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am going to guess. Well, I totally support uh, guessing. Now, you might be saying, really? Uh, you're a math teacher. Uh, you're okay with people guessing? Yes, indeed I am. Uh, it's better than just leaving a question blank. Never, ever, ever leave any math question blank, uh, especially a multiple choice question, unless you're going to get penalized for a wrong answer. So you might kind of look right here. If we know that D is equal to 8, right? So let's uh, at least have some sort of uh, intelligent kind of guess or, you know, let's uh, guess the best we can. So if D is equal to 8, so we're looking at this and, you know, just based upon the figure itself, maybe this seems to be a little bit uh, longer than 8. Maybe it's like 10. So maybe like 12 and 13 seem to be reasonable answers. So now the square root of uh, 77, you might do a quick estimation. Well, the square root of 81 is 9. So maybe this is a little bit better. So you might say, uh, I don't know, I'm going to go with A. Well, that is a fantastic guess. Unfortunately, it's wrong, but at least you try. So the only thing here uh, that will give us complete confidence in getting the answer right is uh, to simply know the mathematics. And again, uh, we're not going to use a calculator. So D is the correct answer. And let's go ahead and get into this because we're dealing with two special geometric situations that you absolutely need to know about. All right, so uh, the first is a square, All right? So this is a square. Now, if we look at this, uh, the diagram itself, it's not absolute, uh, absolutely clear 
that this is a square. Now, why isn't it clear? Well, because a square has uh, all four sides are obviously right angles, right? But that's not the only thing that can have uh, right angles. So this is an important kind of lesson um, in uh, looking at math questions. They can easily kind of try to trick you. So if I give you two situations and I go, all right, here, uh, this thing appears to be a square, but this thing also has four right angles and they're both quadrilaterals, right? Well, this is a rectangle and this is a square. Now, a square is actually a type of rectangle. They're both uh, polygons and quadrilaterals. The difference here is that all four sides are congruent and with the rectangle, uh, opposite sides are congruent. But if I just give you this figure all by itself, well, we don't have any information uh, you know, other than, hey, we have some right angles going on here. So that's why I made it very clear that we do have a square. But you gotta be careful because sometimes problems try to trick you. They're like, hey, this thing looks like a square. Well, unless you have the information that tells you that, yes, indeed, you have a square and not a rectangle, you can't make these assumptions. All right, but in this case, this is a square. And this is a right triangle because here we both have 90 degrees and this is 30 degrees. And if this is 90 degrees, well, this has to be 60 degrees. So we need a kind of a strategy here to figure out this problem. And we're gonna start with the square first. And once we figure out the square part of this problem, we can figure out the triangle part of the problem, which is, of course, we're looking for this length right here, x. All right, so let's take a look at the square. And here is some formulas that you need to know about uh, squares. Now, squares are tremendously important in mathematics, and uh, you need to know a thing or two about squares. So like things like, what's the area of a square? Well, you want to know that the area of a square is that side squared. All right, no problem there. What's the perimeter of a square? Well, we just uh, basically take four and multiply it by the length of one side. But here, uh, with the square, the key thing that you want to understand for this particular problem is that we have a Pythagorean theorem situation. In other words, we have a right triangle, and we can think of a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I can always figure out the length of a hypotenuse if I have the sides of a right triangle. So I could be like, all right, s squared plus s squared is equal to c squared. Well, I don't know what that is, but I have 2s squared is equal to c squared. And when I do all this math, right, I can figure out the length of the hypotenuse. It's going to turn out to be s times the square root of 2. So you don't need to do all this algebra. What you want to do is remember this little shortcut, right? So to find the length of a hy uh, the hypotenuse of a square, as long as you know a side, and that's all you need to know because all the sides are the same, the length of the hypotenuse is the side times the square root of 2. Now, again, you can figure this thing out by using the Pythagorean theorem, but uh, we want to use these uh, little special case formulas. Now, one thing about a square, the diagonal right here uh, bisects this angle. So this is 90 degrees, so this is a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 special right triangle, right? So this is what we're talking about. All right, so we know that the uh, hypotenuse is side uh, times the square root of two, and this is gonna come, on, uh, come in pretty handy because we know that D, remember we have a D for this problem, or the uh, length of diagonal, that is eight, okay? So eight, this thing right here, is equal to the side times the square root of two, and it would be awesome if we could figure out what the side of this square is, because if we could figure out the side, that's, that's obviously this length, but it's also this length right here, because all four sides um, in a square are congruent. All right, so if we can figure out the side, well, then we have this right here, we have 30 degrees, and that's gonna be enough information for us to be able to solve for x, but first we have to do a little bit of algebra here, and let's solve for s, which is the side of the square. All right, so the side times the square root of two is equal to eight. This is the hypotenuse, right? So the length of the hypotenuse. So when we solve for s, we're gonna divide both sides of the equation here by the square root of two. So we're gonna get uh, s is equal to eight divided by the square root of two, and then we need to rationalize. Remember, in algebra, we never like to leave radicals down here in the denominator, so we're gonna multiply both the top and bottom, numerator and denominator, by the square root of two. So we get the square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four, which of course is two. So we have two in the denominator, then we have eight square root of two in the numerator. 
So uh, uh, 8 squared root of 2, we're not uh, done yet, right? So we have 8 squared root of 2 over 2, excuse me. So we can take that 2, divide it into that 8, and we have 4 square root of 2. All right, so again, you need to know a little bit of algebra. You have to be able to work with these square roots. But 4 square root of 2 is what? Well, that is the length of the side of this triangle. Okay, so that is definitely going to help us out because now when we take a look at this figure, we already know that D is equal to 8. But that's not really going to help me out here. But uh, knowing the side of this square is totally going to help me out. So this side of this 30, 60, 90 right triangle is 4 square root of 2. All right, so now we kind of have to like break this up into a separate little problem where we have a 30, 60, 90 uh, special right triangle with this side being 4 square root of 2. And we're basically kind of, we're going to use kind of like the same strategy to figure out what the length of the hypotenuse is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So what we need to do is understand the a special relationship between the sides in a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. Now, this is in contrast to the Pythagorean theorem. So some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. Uchi Math Man, uh, you know, can't we just use the Pythagorean theorem? Well, the Pythagorean theorem, remember, we're trying to get this side x, right? Well, we need two sides. We need two lengths to get this. Now, in other words, if we had, uh, let me go ahead and just erase this here real quick. If this was 3 and this was 4, we could solve for the hypotenuse because we have enough information. We don't know what this is, but uh, we have 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to x squared. So this is going to be 9 plus 16 is equal to x squared. x squared is equal to 25, or x is equal to 5. There you go. We solve for the hypotenuse. But in this case, all we have is this length. Okay, We don't have this length. We have an angle, but we just have this length. So some of you uh, might be saying, hey, well, can't we use some trigonometry to get this side, and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem? Well, yes, you could do that, but that's like taking the long road to get to the solution. The better uh, way to, uh, and kind of like the way that's a really um, key here is understanding that this is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. You absolutely need to be able to recognize uh, this type of triangle and the 45, 45, uh, right, 45, 45, 90 special right triangle, right? So we have two types, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90. These things come up over and over again not only in geometry, but in trigonometry as well. So you got to understand these special formulas that relate the sides of these type of triangles. All right, so let's take a look at this 30, 60, 90 situation. Here is how it goes. So uh, 30 degrees is the smallest angle in this uh, 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So opposite uh, of 30 degrees is the smallest side. Okay, matter of fact, I'm going to kind of... Uh, accentuate this here right uh, like so so we can see this a bit better so here is two angles this is 90 degrees right here right so which one of these appears to be 30 and which one appears to be 60 well if you're saying well this uh, angle looks smaller than this angle well yeah that's uh, correct so we'll call this 30 degrees and we'll call this 60 degrees so what is the smallest side well the smallest side of a triangle will always be opposite of the smallest angle. So here's 30 degrees. This is going to be the smallest side. So we're going to call that X. Okay. Now, uh, in a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle, the hypotenuse is always double the uh, length of the smallest side. Okay. So if this is X, the hypotenuse will be 2X. And that medium side, uh, which is opposite of that medium angle, this is 60 degrees right here, right? So 30 is the smallest angle, 90 is the biggest angle, and 60 is the medium angle, right? So this is the medium side. So uh, the medium side in a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle is X, it's whatever this is, times the square root of three. All right, so I know this is a pretty messy uh, diagram, but I wanted to kind of draw it in this way. Hopefully that makes things clear, but here is the same kind of formula uh, written this way. All right, so we have 30 degrees, and we have to kind of think about, all right, what's the smallest side? Well, this is the smallest side. We'll call this x. The hypotenuse will be uh, twice the smallest side, and that medium side is x times the square root of 3. All right, now we do know what this side is because we just solved for it, right? It's 4 square root of 2. So this is going to be pretty easy to figure out the right answer. So let's go ahead and take that next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe 
to my YouTube channel. Now, uh, you know, I got to kind of squeeze this in because this is important. Now, some of you might be saying, yeah, you just want to get more subscribers. Yes, I do want to get more subscribers, but there's a reason behind uh, me wanting to grow my channel. Okay. And that is, I want to help as many people as possible. And the only way YouTube really kind of pushes out content for any YouTube channel is they look at, hey, how many people are subscribing? How many people are leaving comments? All that kind of stuff. It does count. And when my channel grows, you know, I feel like, hey, I'm helping as many people as I possibly can. So I definitely appreciate your support. And if you don't mind, go ahead and just quickly hit that and hit my uh, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Uh, by the way, if you need additional help with geometry or trigonometry or algebra, anything that I'm talking about in this prom, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish this prom up because now we're ready to go ahead and answer the question. So here is our triangle part of the problem. Remember, we had a square here and we had the diagonal, right, which was eight and we figured out the side, okay, based upon that special formula for 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. So this side right here is four square root of two, but we can kind of strip away that square so we're not confused about what's going on. So this side of this 30, 60, 90 special right triangle is four square root of two. Now the question is asking for X, right? Not uh, this side, okay, so you don't, uh, feel compelled that you have to answer everything about this triangle only answer the question and this is going to be pretty easy because if this is x and the 30 60 90 special right triangle the hypotenuse is simply double the smallest side well the smallest side is 4 square root of 2 so let's just double that or multiply it by 2 and we end up with 8 square root of 2 all right so again 30 60 90 special right triangles 45 45 90 special right triangles you got to know these things uh you know super super good they come up all the time in all sorts of exams especially like the sat act but uh, they're all over the place in geometry and they're absolutely critical in the study of trigonometry right so this stuff is not that difficult but one uh, final point that i want to reiterate is I told you that this thing uh, was a square. And if you look at it right here, it looks like a square, uh, but you can't make that determination based upon the figure. Okay, well, you know, we can't say that this indeed is a square. And you gotta be careful because again, a lot of uh, math questions try to trick you. They'll, they'll, they'll make a figure that appears to be something, but actually it's something else. So we gotta be careful again with these figures, but I did tell you that this was a square. But anyways, Hopefully this video helped you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.